It's my honor to introduce the President of Swiss Confederation, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and, which is important for us, the chair in office. You know that the OCE has the rotating chairmanship, and this year it's the chairmanship of Swiss Confederation, and Mr. Didier Bugalter is the chair in office. And today we also have here the personal envoy of the chair in office, uh, Ambassador Tim Guldeman, whom you've uh, seen several times already. He made several press conferences here. And uh, I'm also uh, honored to introduce the chief monitor of the OC special monitoring mission, the mission, uh, the decision on which was taken by the Swiss chairmanship. So, Ambassador Ertegru Apakan is the Chief Monitor. And with this, I am giving the floor to His Excellency Didier Bufalta. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everybody, and uh, thank you very much for being present at uh, that press conference of uh, the Swiss Chairmanship in Office of the USC in Ukraine. Uh, I have two main objectives for my visit today. I'm here, first of all, in order to uh, express a clear and full political support to the action of the USC in Ukraine, particularly the special monitoring mission, but also the national dialogue project and the election observation mission. I would like also to give impulses and during this visit to these activities of the USC. And the second uh, main objective was to discuss the security situation with the um, government, the Ukrainian government, who made it with the um, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lidashica, and also with the Prime Minister, Netanyahu, uh, some minutes ago. Uh, but for, this, for my statement here today, I would like to focus on um, the actions of the OSC in Ukraine. <coughs> you know that the OSC has been present in Ukraine uh, prior to the crisis, but we have also launched new activities, new actions in response uh, to this uh, crisis. And um, the OSC has principles, the OSC has mechanisms, and these principles and these mechanisms, they can help um, it can uh, help for de-escalating de -escalating the crisis. Um, there is a strong willingness uh, within the uh, member states of the OSC to, to contribute, to make something for helping de-escalating this crisis. Concretely, um, more, most concrete is the special monitoring mission. It was decided <coughs> on the 21st of March. Uh, it was like it must be in the OSC a decision by consensus. Uh, it's not uh, obvious to get a consensus in uh, an organization with 57 member states, but it is also uh, something which is very important because you can remind that uh, there is a wide membership, and we have as members in the OSC Ukraine, the Russian Federation, all EU member states. US and so on, the Eurasian and the Euro-Atlantic security uh, and actors, they are members of uh, this organization of uh, security cooperation in Europe. And therefore, there is a, a strong credibility if we can get this consensus for an action of the USC. It was the case uh, the 21st of March, after weeks of negotiation, and we found then a common ground uh, within the member states. Um, as for today, the staff number is about 130 monitors, so 130 staff members, and we have 100, about 101, I think, members, uh, monitors on the ground already now. Um, we want to scale up. In the mandate, we can go up to 500. We have already now 40 participating states, uh, said 40, not 14, 40 participating states uh, that have seconded experts, uh, 40 out of 57, that is a very high number if you compare with other uh, missions, that's a good number, 
And that is also a proof of this uh, willingness of the international community or of the USC uh, member states to contribute to a solution or maybe uh, um, uh, something very positive for, for this country, Ukraine. Um, we have um, also a uh, new head of mission. During the first time, the first uh, three weeks, we had a temporary head of mission. Uh, there was, it was the director of the Conflict Prevention Center of USC, uh, Mr. Kopiarski. And now we have a, a new head of mission, Ambassador Atigru Atakan. Uh, I will give him the floor afterwards, but um, um, I just would like to say that I am very pleased to have you. Uh, the head of the mission, and we have also two other uh, persons as deputies, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ezerington from Great Britain, uh, he's, all, he's, he's there, uh, and also Mr. Hu uh, from Switzerland, also as deputy, new deputy of this mission. The three persons just came in function just entered in office and uh, they are brand new and I'm uh, very glad to have, the, to have the possibility to introduce them today to the authorities of Ukraine but also to you, to you uh, and the public opinion as new uh, faces, a new, uh, new person uh, in front of this uh, very important task. About the task um, precisely, the mandate of this mission uh, we are, with this um, special monitoring mission, we are the eyes and the ears of the international community. Um, we have to observe, but not only, we have also, also to establish facts and to report facts. And this reporting, they are made to the uh, 57 member states, and we will uh, develop uh, on a more regular basis, a uh, reporting to the public opinion. I mean, press release on a on a very regular basis will be up to now uh, uh, from now on will be uh, will be made. We have to be. Uh, it's maybe natural, but I want to underline it. Uh, we have to be objective, and we have to be impartial. And it is a very important thing uh, from the point of view of the Swiss chairmanship in office. This objectivity of the work of the USC and this impartiality. About the deployment of the mission, um, I've said uh, about the number of monitors. The monitoring teams are deployed to all nine regions that are mentioned in the mandate in uh, the permanent council decision. Um, these are Kherson, Odessa, Lviv, ivano frankivsk Kharkiv, Donetsk, Dnipropetrovsk, Chernivitsi, Luhansk, and also the head, headquarters here in Kiev as a tense place. Um, I would like to express here also uh, on behalf of the Swiss government and also the Swiss citizens I would like to express my gratitude to all monitors. I wrote to all of them personally, but I would like to express here uh, our gratitude for the engagement in this um, task, which is, uh, as I said, very important to the member states of the USC. Uh, before um, giving the floor to Ambassador Apakam, I just would like to mention two other um, actions of the USC in Ukraine. First of all, the uh, election observation mission. Uh, we have also this mission, which is already ongoing. Uh, there uh, are already in Ukraine the hundred uh, long-term observers for this mission. It's not the same mission. This is a mission of the institution ODI, the Office of Democratic Institution and Human Rights. And the uh, hundred uh, long-term monitors for this observation are on the ground and work now. And um, there will be afterwards, in, during the last days before the election of 25th of May, there will be 900 short-term observers coming to Ukraine. That means uh, a total amount of 1,000 observers for this observation mission for the elections. That is a really uh, big mission. Um, 
The discussion I had uh, this morning with uh, responsible of this mission, uh, I can say uh, maybe in only one sentence that um, we have uh, made the constatation that there is a strong political will in Ukraine to hold <coughs> these elections and we will be uh, supporting uh, as an observation mission this uh, important time in the history of Ukraine. And the second uh, activity that I would like to mention uh, after this election observation mission is the National Dialogue Project. Uh, National Dialogue Project was a project coming from the Project Coordinator Office here in, in Kiev. And I must say that as chair in office, chairperson in office, that I find it, and I found it uh, in the last week, I find it today a very, very important task. Uh, national Dialogue Project. It is concluded uh, now, and we are expecting uh, the recommendations and the final report for the beginning of May, but we don't want to wait till the beginning of May. Uh, we have asked for uh, immediate uh, urgent recommendation, and they are clear. Uh, the immediate recommendation is that we have to promote and facilitate an inclusive national dialogue uh, that could be, that can be, an assistance uh, for the constitutional issue. And uh, the USC is uh, ready to support the constitutional process. For instance, um, we are ready, and we have uh, discussed that to, uh, this morning with the uh, government, who is ready to uh, work uh, closely for organizing um, uh, roundtables in the regions um, immediately uh, and during this round table there will be issues like uh, uh, regions power enhancing decentralization that has to be uh, that have to be discussed um, just maybe three three uh, conclusive remarks of this statement first of all I'd like to call upon once more as the chairmanship in office of the CC, of the OCE, uh, I'd like to call upon all sides to move the situation away from confrontation. Uh, the challenges, uh, there are numerous challenges, but these challenges must all be tackled through inclusive and structured dialogue from our point of view. The OCE expresses its readiness to assist Ukraine in this process the USC can provide all mechanisms for contributing to de-escalating de the crisis. That's my first remark. The second, it's up to Ukraine to design its future. But if it is wished, my country, Switzerland, not only the chairmanship in office, but also Switzerland as a country, is also ready to provide expertise on matters like decentralization. And my third remark, um, we have spoken about dialogue, dialogue. We need uh, a dialogue within Ukraine, but we need also a dialogue among the major external actors. And I call all major actors to enter this dialogue very seriously. The chairmanship in office of the OSC welcomed uh, particularly that uh, Ukraine, uh, Russian Federation, EU and US plan to hold a meeting in Geneva on this Thursday, 17th of April. Uh, we, there is a need for um, such a contact group. Uh, it is obvious already for some weeks, and we had made that proposal already at the end of February uh, as we uh, presented uh, the priorities of the USC in front of the Security Council of the United Nations. Switzerland and also the chairmanship uh, of the OEC are ready to contribute in any way the party may wish for this international dialogue. Thank you very much. And now I would like to uh, give the floor of the floor a comment, some comments to uh, our new head of mission, Mr. Ambassador Baka. You have the floor. You. Uh. Good afternoon. Well, I just arrived in Ukraine yesterday evening at late hours, so this is my uh, first.
first working day in here. And uh, really, uh, it's a uh, pleasure for me to uh, accompany the President during his trip to Kiev. And so uh, I just started my work. And uh, I will be brief. I fully share the observations of Mr. President uh, on both uh, Microsoft's substance as well as Microsoft process. We are operating under OECE principles, and also we have a, a decision 1117 of the Permanent Council of OECE uh, describing our mandate. Uh, Mr. President, kindly, in a brief manner, describe this mandate. It may be somewhat repetitive, but I would like to repeat it again for, 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 for underlining our mandate once again. I think uh, gathering information and report there on establishing facts in an objective and impartial manner, and also monitor and support respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, also to facilitate dialogue, dialogue and also facilitation. I think these are the core, uh, our core job, our core functions, uh, and we have been entrusted by the Permanent Council. We are on the field at the moment. We are operating, we are giving reports, and already, you know, there's going to be a report circulated to the press members on the part of the OEC just after this uh, press meeting, as far as I understand. So I will be working uh, under the Swiss uh, uh, chairmanship uh, with my deputies here and uh, we will do our best in order to contribute uh, to the, uh, to the uh, stability and well-being of Ukraine and uh, to the people of the Ukraine. We came here with these feelings and we will be cooperating with the Ukrainian authorities in the same time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are open for a discussion question. Also Please, your question. Discussion on Please. In Wildeman, yeah. Uh, uh, Hello, Alexander Mernick. Uh, I was wondering uh, what kind of impact do you expect your reports would uh, make uh, if we see that uh, when decisions of the UN Assembly uh, doesn't really uh, make any difference uh, if you're talking about the position of Russia. And as well, uh, how do you assess the decision of Ukrainian uh, government uh, to begin anti-terrorist operation uh, when Russia is uh, saying um, that if any of the protesters would be hurt, they won't be at the meeting uh, in Geneva. So. Well, first of all, I, I think it is really not to underestimate the fact that um, the international community can be present. <coughs> we have uh, really fought during weeks to get this uh, consensus decision, and we can just imagine not to have it. We couldn't be there. We couldn't have an observation, we couldn't establish facts. Um, we don't say that uh, we can make more than contribute to a solution, but we are part of the solution. And without having uh, such uh, ears and eyes open for the international community and this credibility of impartiality and objectivity, then it would lack something in, uh, in this issue uh, in Ukraine. Um, and I understand your question, we cannot uh, make everything uh, if we say uh, how difficult it is, but um, that is part of the solution, and that is very, very important. Um, you mentioned also the uh, uh, anti-terrorist attack, and we, we have issued a statement uh, yesterday that uh, tells very clearly that we have, it has to be respected, the state monopoly on uh, the use of force, but at the same time, uh, it's, it is also essential, the law enforcement ensured, uh, measured an appropriate response. And this is uh, the framework of the OSCE principles. Uh, statement of Russia and not of the OSCE, but um, 
we have said very clearly uh, from the very beginning that uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, discussion within Ukraine is uh, very important and to be respected, but at the same time, it, is, uh, it would be uh, an advantage if the international community can, could coordinate um, the uh, different position in an international contact group. Therefore, we welcome the possibility to have this meeting in Geneva last week, but um, to be frank, uh, we would have welcomed uh, such a meeting already for a long time. Um, then we will see if it um, happens. Uh, they are welcome in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, anyway. Anytime as well. Yes. Katrin Eigendorf from German TV Center. The government in Kiev accuses Russia of provoking uprise in eastern parts of uh, the country. Do you have any information that can confirm this? No, we don't have uh, now uh, firm uh, elements to confirm uh, such, a, such an assertion, but we are going to work very hard on establishing facts. We will uh, give the reports, as I already said, not only to the 57 member states, but also to the public opinion in a very transparent way. Um, transparent way. We want to be, as already said as well, very objective and impartial. And if we have facts, then they will be given to the public opinion. So not any fact from your mission in the Eastern Parts? Not for Russia. the time being. Mm -hmm. uh, Press TV, Alexandra Malakpa. Uh, could you please clarify, as far as I understood, those uh, observers, uh, they, are already, they were already in those four cities in the eastern Ukraine. Uh, could you please clarify what are the, uh, the conclusion of their first visit? Or how, what is the estimation of this? What they saw there and what they think about their arrest in those, in those cities? question. <clears throat> well, we are going to share with you in writing soon the observations made by the monitors is going to be distributed within a few minutes but time. Could you please say like, for, for TV, uh, if they saw people there, if they talked to them, if they, uh, how do they estimate the situation on the ground? What did they see? As, as you said, you are ears and eyes of the, of the, of the, of the agency. So could you, could you tell us what did you see there on the ground? Maybe briefly, but just something at least. Well, <clears throat> I will be quoting from our from our reports. The OSC Special Monitoring Mission assessed the security situation in eastern Ukrainian cities of Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, and the town of. Solovyansk as tense and evolving, based on observations on Sunday, 13 April 2014. And the so monitoring team went to Solovyansk following reports of an attempt by Ministry of Interior Forces to regain the occupied police building and countered uh, multiple roadblocks before being permitted to enter the town by a heavily armed man. They spoke people with the, on the streets at the barricades surrounding the occupied police building and in town's hospital. In the city of Donetsk, although the number of barricades it occupied of last administration building and tents on Lenin Square did not appear to be increasing, no pedestrians were observed near the regional police headquarters. The monitors charged that the situation could deteriorate in Kharkiv, the monitors noted a large police presence with up to 600 pro Maidan protesters and around 2,000 pro Russian protesters who moved to the city administration building in the mid afternoon. City Mayor Kernes addressed the crowd after an initial delay, calling for a stop to the blockade and negotiations. In Luhansk, the situation also the same with up to 5,000 people in front of the Luans Security Service Building and more than 5,000 supporters in the neighboring park. So these observations are going and you will have with them. This is what we have received from monitoring teams. This is what I have received. 
this is my early hours here in Claire, but this is a collective work which has been done by my uh, deputies and also by our monitors, and this is a collective report uh, on part of team and headquarters in the Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? questions? Um, you said you have a good National TV. You said um, you will offer um, help. What kind of help could you offer the um, Ukrainian government? Mm -hmm. You mean Switzerland or chairmanship of the USC? Um, um, I, 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 I gave uh, several uh, <coughs> possibilities to give help. Um, as Switzerland, uh, first of all, I said that uh, we have a lot of expertise in let's say, the decentralization uh, discussions. Um, that means uh, how to organize an enhancing uh, region, region sport. And um, if there is a need, and if it is wished by uh, the Ukrainian uh, authorities um, in the next time for um, maybe uh, accompanying the national dialogue with expertise, then we are ready to do that. Um, very, very soon and um, in an almost immediate way. That is for uh, Switzerland, but uh, anyway, um, every uh, request of this type in another, uh, in another uh, issue could be also uh, discussed with uh, my country. That is for Switzerland as Switzerland. But Switzerland as Swiss chairmanship in office, um, I think the best that we can make it is to make uh, this uh, special monitoring mission, first of all, very effective and transparent, to stay uh, remaining very objective and impartial. Um, you know uh, and you have seen we have a new head of mission uh, for some hours, uh, with the people in some hours also new, and we have now to uh, scale up the mission, to have more monitors on the ground, and not only to observe, to establish real facts, and to give them in a transparent way the public. That is a way we can really uh, contribute. And um, as I said before, I understand, I am the, the opinion that the link between um, the mandate of the monitoring mission, which is also to facilitate the national dialogue, that is also in the mandate of the special monitoring mission, and the national dialogue project, the link is very important. It means this accompanying of the national uh, dialogue project, concretely we would like to to work very close with the uh, Ukrainian uh, authorities you know, to organize this round table in the different regions, but very inclusive one, that there is a, a real, um, um, uh, there is a reality of an inclusive dialogue in this country, and then it's up to Ukraine to decide uh, what will be the next constitution. But uh, if uh, the dialogue is inclusive, and if we can um, fuel the dialogue with expertise and, uh, and uh, contribution from OEC or from other countries like Switzerland, uh, we think that could be a, only a, a good contribution. It is not, once more, it is not all for the solution, but it is part of it. And uh, uh, in a, such a difficult solution, uh, we have to be very willing and at the same time very humble. Uh, we just can uh, give part of the solution. Let's do it. And the USC is really very willing to, to do that with humility, but to do that with willingness. Yeah. So you have some indication <coughs> sorry, that Kiev is sending troops to the eastern border with <coughs> Russia, so military troops. Yeah, the question is, if you have any indication for this? No, I don't have any indication. Do you have it? So they don't. He is not sending military troops to the eastern border. If the OEC said we don't know, it doesn't mean that they don't do No, no, do. no. It's just but, you uh, we don't know about that. Okay, thank you. And there was another question for you. Yeah. You spoke about, about the willingness to reinforce the mission on the ground. Could you give us a more concrete uh, idea about the level in the next week of that uh, reinforcement? The major number? Yeah. Well, it depends also on the financing of the mission, but uh, as I said in the mandate, we have the possibility to go up to 500. We are now uh, with the staff uh, members uh, about 130. We would like to, to scale up uh, quite rapidly to, to 200 or 300, but uh, 
there should be also a um, discussion about financing this mission. The financing for the first time is already okay, but uh, for the next uh, stages, steps, we have to preside that.